1930 FIFA World Cup was the inaugural FIFA World Cup, the world championship for men's national association football teams. It took place in Uruguay from 13 to 30 July 1930. FIFA, football's international governing body, selected Uruguay as host nation, as the country would be celebrating the centenary of its first constitution, and the Uruguay national football team had successfully retained their football title at the 1928 Summer Olympics. All matches were played in the Uruguayan capital, Montevideo, the majority at the Estadio Centenario, which was built for the tournament. Thirteen teams seven from South America, four from Europe and two from North America entered the tournament. Only a few European teams chose to participate because of the difficulty of traveling to South America. The teams were divided into four groups, with the winner of each group progressing to the semi-finals. The first two World Cup matches took place simultaneously, and were won by France and the United States, who defeated Mexico 4–1 and Belgium 3–0, respectively. Lucien Laurent of France scored the first goal in World Cup history, while U.S. goalkeeper Jimmy Douglas posted the first official clean sheet in the tournament. Argentina, Uruguay, the United States and Yugoslavia each won their respective groups to qualify for the semi-finals. In the final, hosts and pre-tournament favorites Uruguay defeated Argentina 4-2 in front of a crowd of 68,346 people, and became the first nation to win the World Cup. Topic. Participants The first World Cup was the only one without qualification. Every country affiliated with FIFA was invited to compete, and given a deadline of 28 February 1930 to accept. Plenty of interest was shown by nations in the Americas, Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru and the United States all entered. A total of seven South American teams participated, more than in any subsequent World Cup finals. However, because of the long and costly trip by ship across the Atlantic Ocean, and the length of absence required for players, very few European teams were inclined to take part. Some refused to countenance travel to South America in any circumstances, and no European entries were received before the February deadline. In an attempt to gain some European participation, the Uruguayan Football Association sent a letter of invitation to the Football Association, even though the British home nations England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales had resigned from FIFA at the time. This was rejected by the FA Committee on 18 November 1929. Two months before the start of the tournament, no team from Europe had officially entered. FIFA president Jules Rimet intervened, and eventually four European teams made the trip by sea, Belgium, France, Romania, and Yugoslavia. The Romanians, managed by Constantin Radulescu and coached by their captain Rudolf Wetzer and Octave Luchide, entered the competition following the intervention of newly crowned King Carol II. He selected the squad personally, and negotiated with employers to ensure that the players would still have jobs upon their return. The French entered at the personal intervention of Rimé, but neither France's star defender Manuel Anatole nor the team's regular coach Gaston Barreau could be persuaded to make the trip. 
The Belgians participated at the instigation of German-Belgian FIFA Vice President Rodolf Sildreyers. The Romanians boarded the SS Conte Verde at Genoa, Italy. The French were picked up at Villefranche-sur-Mer, France on the 21st of June 1930, and the Belgians embarked at Barcelona, Spain. The Conte Verde carried Rime, the trophy and the three designated European referees, the Belgians Jean Langanis and Henri Christophe, along with Thomas Balway, a Parisian who may have been English. The Brazilian team were picked up when the boat docked in Rio de Janeiro, DF on 29 June before arriving in Uruguay on 4 July. Yugoslavia travelled via the mail steamship Florida from Marseille, France. In the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, there were doubts about their participation at first. Since the Croatians decided to boycott the national team, King Alexander I did not want to finance the whole idea, but in the end, they found a solution. Belgrade, Yugoslavia Football Association officials decided to round up only domestic Serbian star players, mainly from two rival Belgrade clubs, BSK and SK Yugoslavia, with an additional three Serbs who played for French clubs Ivan Beck among them. Therefore, the Yugoslavia team was exclusively made up of Serbian players, and with the two biggest stars of the team, Blagoj Marjanovic Moza, and Aleksandr Tirnanik Turk, both from BSK, they were ready for a trip to South America to represent Yugoslavia in the World Cup. The Yugoslavians were the youngest team in the World Cup, with an average age of 21 years and 258 days. After their first match, against Brazil, they received a new nickname, the Ikes, or Ichachos, in Spanish, by the Uruguayan press, referring to most of the players' surnames that ended up with the Ik, or Vic suffix, which is quite common for Serbian last names. They achieved the joint biggest success in both Yugoslav and Serbian subsequent World Cup footballing history, by earning fourth place, a result that would be repeated in 1962. <laughs> Venues. Italy, Sweden, the Netherlands, Spain, Hungary and Uruguay all lodged applications to host the event. Uruguay's bid became the clear selection after all the other countries withdrew their bids. All matches took place in Montevideo. Three stadiums were used, a Estadio Centenario, a Estadio Positos, and a Estadio Park Central. The Estadio Centenario was built both for the tournament and as a celebration of the centenary of Uruguayan independence. Designed by Juan Scasso, it was the primary stadium for the tournament, referred to by Rime as a temple of football. With a capacity of 90,000, it was the largest football stadium outside the British Isles. The stadium hosted 10 of the 18 matches, including both semi-finals and the final. However, a rushed construction schedule and delays caused by the rainy season meant the Centenario was not ready for use until five days into the tournament. Early matches were played at smaller stadiums usually used by Montevideo football clubs Nacional and Peñarol, the 20,000 capacity Park Central and the Positos. <laughs> <laughs> Match officials 
15 referees participated in the tournament, four Europeans, two Belgians Henri Christophe and John Langanis, a Frenchman, and a Romanian Constantin Radulescu, also the Romanian team coach, and 11 from the Americas, among them six Uruguayans. In order to eliminate differences in the application of the laws of the game, the referees were invited to one short meeting to iron out the most conflicting issues arising from the game. Of all the refereeing appointments, the two that attracted most attention were that of Gilberto de Almeida Rego in the match between Argentina and France, in which the Brazilian referee blew for full time six minutes early, and that of the Bolivian Ulysses Sosados in the Argentina and Mexico encounter, which Argentina Argentina won 6-3. During the game Saucedo, who was also the coach of Bolivia, awarded three penalties. The following is the list of officials to serve as referees and linesmen. Officials in italics were only employed as linesmen during the tournament. Format and draw The 13 teams were drawn into four groups, with Group 1 containing four teams, and the others containing three. Each group played a round-robin format, with the four group winners progressing to the knockout semifinal stage. Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil, and the United States were seeded, and were kept apart in the draw, which took place in Montevideo once all the teams arrived. Since there were no qualifying games, the opening two matches of the tournament were the first World Cup games ever played, taking place simultaneously on 13 July 1930. France beat Mexico 4 1 at the Estadio Posito while the United States defeated Belgium 3–0 at the same time at the Estadio Grand Parc Central. France's Lucien Laurent was the scorer of the first World Cup goal. <laughs> Tournament summary Topic. Group 1 The first group was the only one to contain four teams, Argentina, Chile, France and Mexico. Two days after France's victory over Mexico, they faced group favorites Argentina. Injuries hindered France, goalkeeper Alex Tapot had to leave the field after 20 minutes, and Laurent, after a fierce tackle by Luis Monti, spent most of the match limping. However, they held out for most of the match, only succumbing to an 81st-minute goal scored from a Monti free kick. The game featured an officiating controversy when referee Almeida Rego erroneously blew the final whistle six minutes early, with Frenchman Marcel Langiller clear on goal. Play only resumed after protests from the French players. Although France had played twice in 48 hours, Chile had yet to play their first match. They faced Mexico the following day, gaining a comfortable 3 0 win. France's final match, against Chile, featured the first penalty kick of the World Cup. The first goalkeeper to save a penalty was Alex Tapot of France on 19 July 1930, saving from Chile's Carlos Vidal in the 30th minute of the match. In Argentina's second match, against Mexico, three penalty kicks were awarded. During the same match on 19 July 1930 Mexico's Oscar Bonfiglio Martinez saved another penalty at the 23rd minute of the match against Argentina's Fernando Paternoster. 
Guillermo Stable scored a hat-trick in his international debut as Argentina won 6-3, despite the absence of their captain Manuel Ferreira, who had returned to Buenos Aires to take a law exam. Qualification was decided by the group's final match, contested by Argentina and Chile, who had beaten France and Mexico, respectively. The game was marred by a brawl sparked by a foul on Arturo Torres by Monti. Argentina won 3-2-1 against their neighbours and advanced to the semi-finals. Topic. Group 2 The second group contained Brazil, Bolivia and Yugoslavia. Brazil, the group seeds, were expected to progress, but in the group's opening match, unexpectedly lost 2-2-1 to Yugoslavia. Going into the tournament Bolivia had never previously won an international match. For their opener they paid tribute to the hosts by wearing shirts each emblazoned with a single letter, spelling, Viva Uruguay, as the team lined up. Both of Bolivia's matches followed a similar pattern, a promising start gradually transforming into heavy defeat. Against Yugoslavia, they held out for an hour before conceding, but were four goals down by the final whistle. Misfortune played its part, several Bolivian goals were disallowed. Against Brazil, when both teams had only pride to play for, the score was 1-0 to Brazil at half-time. Brazil added three more in the second half, two of them scored by the multi-sportsman Preguino. Yugoslavia qualified for the semi-finals. Group 3 Hosts Uruguay were in a group with Peru and Romania. The opening match in this group saw the first player expulsion in the competition, when Placido Galindo of Peru was dismissed against Romania. The Romanians made their man advantage pay, their 3-1 win included two late goals. This match had the smallest crowd of any in World Cup history. The official attendance was 2,459, but the actual figure is generally accepted to be around 300. Because of construction delays at Estadio Centenario, Uruguay's first match was not played until five days into the tournament. The first to be held at the Centenario, it was preceded by a ceremony in honor of the Uruguayan centenary celebrations. The Uruguayan team spent the four weeks preceding the match in a training camp, at which strict discipline was exercised. Goalkeeper Andres Mazzali was dropped from the squad for breaking a curfew to visit his wife. One hundred years to the day of the creation of Uruguay's first constitution, the hosts won a tight match against Peru 1-0. Spectators praised Peru's defense, and this turned out to be the only tournament match in which Uruguay scored only one goal. The result was viewed as a poor performance by the Uruguayan press, but lauded in Peru. Uruguay subsequently defeated Romania with ease, scoring four first-half goals to win 4-0. Topic. Group 4 The fourth group contained Belgium, Paraguay and the United States. The American team, which contained a significant number of new caps, were reputedly nicknamed the Shot Putters by an unnamed source in the French contingent. They beat their first opponents, Belgium, 3-0. The ease of the victory was unexpected. Uruguayan newspaper Impercial wrote that, 
the large score of the American victory has really surprised the experts. Belgian reports bemoaned the state of the pitch and refereeing decisions, claiming that the second goal was offside. The group's second match, played in windy conditions, witnessed the first tournament hat-trick, scored by Bert Patinod of the United States against Paraguay. Until 10 November 2006, the first hat-trick that FIFA acknowledged had been scored by Guillermo Stable of Argentina, two days after Patinod. However, in 2006 FIFA announced that Patinod's claim to being the first hat-trick scorer was valid, as a goal previously assigned to teammate Tom Flory was reattributed to Patinod. With the United States having secured qualification, the final match in the group was a dead rubber. Paraguay beat Belgium by a 1–0 margin. <inaudible> <inaudible> Semi-finals The four group winners, Argentina, Yugoslavia, Uruguay and the United States, moved to the semi-finals. The two semi-final matches saw identical scores. The first semi-final was played between the US and Argentina on a rain-drenched pitch. The United States team, which featured six British-born players, lost midfielder Rafael Tracy after ten minutes to a broken leg as the match became violent. A Monte goal halfway through the first half gave Argentina a 1–0 halftime lead. In the second half, the strength of the United States team was overwhelmed by the pace of the Argentinian attacks, the match finishing 6–1 to Argentina. In the second semifinal there were shades of the 1924 Summer Olympics match between Yugoslavia and Uruguay. Here, though, Yugoslavia took a surprise lead through Vujadinovic. Uruguay then took a 2–1 lead. Then shortly before halftime Yugoslavia had a goal disallowed by a controversial offside decision. The hosts scored three more in the second half to win 6–1, Pedro C. completing a hat-trick. <laughs> Third and fourth place The now traditional third place playoff was not established until 1934, so the format of the 1930 World Cup is unique in not distinguishing between the third and fourth placed teams. Occasional sources, notably a FIFA bulletin from 1984, incorrectly imply that a third place match occurred and was won 3 1 by Yugoslavia. Accounts differ as to whether a third-place match was originally scheduled. According to a 2009 book by Haider Jawad, Yugoslavia refused to play a third-place match because they were upset with the refereeing in their semi-final against Uruguay. At the end of the championship, the captains of the United States team, Tom Flory, and Yugoslavia, Militan Ivkovic, both received bronze medals. Yet a FIFA Technical Committee report on the 1986 World Cup included full retrospective rankings of all teams at all previous World Cup finals. This report ranked the United States third and Yugoslavia fourth, due to a better goal difference on otherwise identical records, a practice since continued by FIFA. In 2010, the son of Kosta Haji, the chief of Yugoslav delegation at the 1930 World Cup and the vice president of the Football Association of Yugoslavia at the time, claimed that Yugoslavia, as a team, has been awarded one bronze medal, which has been kept by Haji himself and his family for the following 80 years. 
According to this source, Yugoslavia was placed third because of the semi-finals loss to the eventual champions, Uruguay. Topic. Final The resounding wins for Uruguay and Argentina in the semi-finals meant the final was a repeat of the matchup in the 1928 Olympic final, which Uruguay had won 2-2-1 after a replay. The final was played at the Estadio Centenario on 30 July. Feelings ran high around the La Plata Basin as the Argentine supporters crossed the river with the war cry Victoria o Muerte, Victory or Death, dispelling any uncertainty as to whether the tournament had captured the imagination of the public. The ten boats earmarked to carry Argentine fans from Buenos Aires to Montevideo proved inadequate, and any number of assorted craft attempted the crossing. An estimated 10–15,000 Argentinians made the trip, but the port at Montevideo was so overwhelmed that many did not even make landfall before kickoff, let alone reach the stadium. At the stadium, supporters were searched for weapons. The gates were opened at 8 o'clock, six hours before kickoff, and at noon the ground was full, the official attendance 93,000. A disagreement overshadowed the build-up to the match as the teams failed to agree on who should provide the match ball, forcing FIFA to intervene and decree that the Argentine team would provide the ball for the first half and the Uruguayans would provide their own for the second. Uruguay made one change from their semi-final lineup. Castro replaced Anselmo, who missed out due to illness. Monti played for Argentina despite receiving death threats on the eve of the match. The referee was Belgian John Langanis, who only agreed to officiate a few hours before the game, having sought assurances for his safety. One of his requests was for a boat to be ready at the harbour within one hour of the final whistle, in case he needed to make a quick escape. The hosts scored the opening goal through Pablo Dorado, a low shot from a position on the right. Argentina, displaying superior passing ability, responded strongly. Within eight minutes they were back on level terms, Carlos Peuchel received a Ferreira through ball, beat his marker and equalized. Shortly before half-time leading tournament goalscorer Guillermo Stable gave Argentina a 2-1 lead. Uruguay captain Nasazi protested, maintaining that Stable was offside, but to no avail. In the second half Uruguay gradually became ascendant. Shortly after Monti missed a chance to make the score 3-1, Uruguay attacked in numbers, and Pedro C. scored an equalizer. Ten minutes later a goal by Santos Iriarte gave Uruguay the lead, and just before full-time Castro made it 4-2 to seal the win. Langanis ended the match a minute later, and Uruguay thus added the title World Cup winners to their mantle of Olympic champions. Jules Rimet presented the World Cup trophy, which was later named for him, to the head of the Uruguayan Football Association, Raúl Jude. The following day was declared a national holiday in Uruguay, in the Argentinian capital, Buenos Aires, a mob threw stones at the Uruguayan consulate. Francisco Varallo, who played as a forward for Argentina, was the last player of the final to die. On the 30th of August 2010, France, Yugoslavia, and the United States all played friendlies in South America following the competition. 
Brazil played France on the 1st of August, Yugoslavia on the 10th of August, and the United States on the 17th of August, while Argentina hosted Yugoslavia on the 3rd of August. Uruguay's aggregate goal difference of plus 1-2 over four games, at an average of plus three per match, remains the highest average goal difference per match of any World Cup champion, and the second highest of any World Cup. Cup Finals participant, after Hungary in 1954. <laughs> Group stage <laughs> Group 1 Topic Group Two Topic Group Three Topic Group Four Topic Knockout stage Topic Bracket Topic Semifinals Topic Final Topic Goal Scorers With eight goals, Guillermo Stable was the top scorer in the tournament. In total, 70 goals were scored by 36 players, with only one of them credited as an own goal. Eight goals Five goals Four goals Three goals Two goals One goal one own goal. Topic FIFA retrospective ranking. In 1986, FIFA published a report that ranked all teams in each World Cup up to and including 1986, based on progress in the competition, overall results, and quality of the opposition. The rankings for the 1930 tournament were as follows. Topic: Last surviving players. The last surviving player from Uruguay's starting lineup was Ernesto Mascheroni, who died on the 3rd of July 1984 at the age of 76. He was outlived by reserve defender Emilio Recoba who died on 12 September 1992 age 87, but did not play any matches in the tournament. Several other players who participated in the tournament outlived the Uruguayan team, including Lucien Laurent, who scored the first goal in World Cup history. Laurent died in 2005, aged 97, several years after being a guest of honor at France's 1998 World Cup victory. The last surviving player from the 1930 tournament was Argentine forward Francisco Varallo, who died on 30 August 2010 at the age of 100, 80 years after the tournament. Topic. See also See you in Montevideo, 2014 Serbian film recreating the tournament from the point of view of the Yugoslavian team. Topic. Notes
Topic Bibliography Almeida, Ronnie J. 2006. Where It All Began. Lulu. ISBN 978-1-4116-7906-1. Crouch, Terry. 2002. The World Cup, The Complete History. London, Orem. ISBN 1-85410-843-3. Dunning, Eric, Malcolm, Dominic. 2003. Sport. Routledge. ISBN 978-0-415-26292-7. Freddie, Chris. 2006. Complete Book of the World Cup 2006. London, HarperCollins. ISBN 0-00-722916-X. Glanville, Brian. 2005. The Story of the World Cup. London, Faber and Faber. ISBN 0-571-22944-1. Goldblatt, David. 2008. The Ball is Round: A Global History of Soccer. Penguin. ISBN 978-1-59448-296-0. Retrieved the 30th of August 2010. Hunt, Chris. 2006. World Cup Stories: The History of the FIFA World Cup. Where, Interact. ISBN 0-9549819-2-8. Jawad, Haider, 2009, Four Weeks in Montevideo, The Story of World Cup 1930, 17 Media and Publishing Lisi, Clemente Angelo, 2007. A History of the World Cup, 1930-2006. Lanham, Maryland, Scarecrow Press. ISBN 0-8108-5905-X. Retrieved 26 April 2011. Seddon, Peter. 2005. The World Cup's Strangest Moments. London, Robson. ISBN 1-86105-869-1. Topic. External links Media related to FIFA World Cup 1930 at Wikimedia Commons 1930 FIFA World Cup Uruguay, FIFA.com